everybody. Can anybody hear me? As you can see, I'm sans a co-host. So, you know, that's the thing with live TV, unfortunately. And um, hmm, I'm noticing that the that the thing is going a little weird. Can someone let me know if the uh, video is working or not? Okay. So let me see. La, 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 la. Do I see the microphone moving? Uh, okay, yay, people can hear me. So as you can see, I have this lovely hat. Oops, wait, forgot something. I forgot to turn on the light. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Is that a little bright? Oh, ugh. <laughs> ah! No, that's not going to work. We'll just stick with this one, <laughs> even though it seems a little bright. But, um, you know, that's how it is. Live, not live TV, live internet and uh, an at-home setup. So this lovely hat, first I want to say thank you to Georgie's and Mommy's Finds. Uh, those who watched last week's broadcast might recall that we broadcast from Georgie's and Mommy's. And I gave a little Facebook tour of uh, the shop afterwards. So if you missed it, go back to the Facebook video and look at, uh, look at it. Anyway, so this lovely hat, as you can see, is available from Georgie's and Mommy's. Later, whoops, wait a second. There we go. Perfect for, what do you call it? The Kentucky Derby. So um, hello everybody who we have. We have Jim, hi Jim. And we have, uh, Lewis and Jim and hello, hello everybody. Today, I think we have a moderator uh, chat, moderating the chat. We have seven viewers already. Oh my goodness. So um, I know you guys were expecting somebody else to be sitting here with me, but because of some deplorables, you know, people who are mean spirited. Today was supposed to be not so nice tweets. And um, so the not so nice people kind of made things not so nice for the person who was supposed to be my guest. So I'd like to say thank you to those not so nice people for being not so nice. Anyway, so today is February 13th, 2019, and we are doing um, Melissa Hill Raw Talk Beta Test number four. Let me see, I'm gonna adjust this light right behind me. How's that? So that way it doesn't look like I have the sun behind my head. And uh, well, we'll just leave that. Um, let's see, let me move, let me move this orchid over. Nope. <laughs> eh, that's okay. There we go. Anyway, so um, I'm, I am waiting for a substitute co-host. As soon as that person gets here, that person will be sitting right here. Yay, person. Okay, so, uh, oh, thank you. Um, working, that works. Lewis, uh, it's a derby day, it is. As a matter of fact, I've got my derby, derby beverage. <laughs> um, thank you. I love this hat, I wish I could keep it. I think she said, I think she said the price range on this is about $50. So if you wanna know more about the hat, then just go to uh, the Raw Talk Facebook page and there's a link there for Georgie's and Mommy's finds. And yes, she does ship. So all you gotta do is just send a message to um, Georgie's and Mommy's, which I already said the link is on the Melissa Hill Raw Talk Facebook page. Click on it, send a message to go, yo, I'm interested in the super awesome derby hat that Melissa was wearing, red and black checkers. I don't know, I think it's, I think it's really cool. I wish I could keep it myself, but I don't have any place to go to wear this. And I think I'd hit a lot of people. Who knows, maybe the next special event. Um, <laughs> right? Thanks, asswipes, ass hats. Ass hats. Um, let's see, Darnell. Good evening. Hello, Darnell. And oh, thank you, Eric. So, yes, I spent all afternoon setting this up. Um, part of my beta test is not just testing the platform in which I'll be broadcasting. It's also testing which location seems to work best. 
Now, this spot right here seems to be working okay. However, I'm close to a window with a lot of traffic. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I can hear it. Um, I'm also going to try taking uh, Skype calls tonight because I know a couple weeks ago someone had inquired about Skype calls. So, um, and see, I'm, I'm, I'm on my Skype right now. And I'm going to make my status active. There you go. So uh, let's see. Um, yeah. So here we go again. You know, problems with live broadcasting, last minute things happen. Um, I was thinking I could get Freckles up here to be my co-host, but he's busy running around. Freckles, Freckles, you want to be my co-host? Hmm? You got to come over on this side. Can you come up? Oh. Here, let's switch. Do you want to come over here? <laughs> He's trying to get, here, come over here. Oh, I see. I see the problem. Hold on. Okay, come on. Oh, wrong chair. You want to come over there? Go ahead. <laughs> Yay, it worked. <laughs> Hi, Freckles. So everyone, this is Freckles. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, he <laughs> he likes he likes licking his mommy's face. Um, for those of you who don't know the story of Freckles, I found him actually when I was um, helping some friends of mine move to Fresno, and we were staying in a Motel Six. It was a rainy day in April, and this little critter who's about, well, I think he was about 35 pounds at the time, came scratching at the door. I opened the door and there he was just sitting there. I thought he was brown. I thought he was a brown dog. And he's just sitting there wagging his tail. And I looked at him and I said, oh my God, you're exactly what I prayed for. Cause I had, we had another dog at the time who uh, had a heart condition named Bailey, and I knew Bailey's time was coming to an end because uh, he his prognosis was like four years and it was already eight years. So, you know, I knew that the time was coming to an end for uh, Bailey. And and then uh, actually for a minute, I was calling this guy White Bailey because Bailey was black and white. And this guy's white and brown. So we called him White Bailey. Um, and I was looking for another home for him because I knew Bailey had the heart condition. Uh, my friend that I was living with was kind of like, you know, we already got Bailey. I don't know about this. And then we just, <laughs> and then I brought him up to the, to the house. Hi. And um, one night I took him out to a, to a, a coffee, uh, what do you call it? You know, a coffee shop type place, you know, one of those trendy coffee shops. And, um, and there were some, some people there. Uh, what was her name? Lin, was it Linda? L Lisa. Oh, I can't remember. The singer from Four Non Blondes. She was there and she came up to Freckles and she just started ooing and aahing over him and taking pictures and all this stuff. And as we were walking out of the coffee shop, everyone was like, oh, can I pet your dog? He's so cute. He's adorable and all this stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I'm keeping him. I'm keeping him. <laughs> and that was about eight years ago. And here he is. So... Anyway, so the day <laughs> the day that Freckles came into my life, uh, I opened up the, the Motel 6 room door. He walked in. Hello. And um, he went directly to the toilet. Like, literally, he went, walked to where the toilet is and started drinking out of it. And I'm going, no, 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 we don't, we don't do that. And, um, and the motel happened to be sharing a parking lot with, uh, like, you know, one of those, those big dog place like Petco or whatever it was. So I had, I don't know, $20, maybe 30, 50. I don't remember in my pocket, walked next door, got him a leash, got him a collar. Cause he had no collar, got him a bag of food and a bowl. Put, I went back to the hotel room. He ate and then he proceeded to, uh, so he laid down, put his head under the bed and slept for 12 hours straight. And, and I still thought, I still thought he was a brown dog. He was just brown. And um, what's happening here? Um, my little box isn't working. I don't know why. So I still thought he was a brown dog. And um, the, after a few days, I tried to give him a shower. You know, I filled up the, put him in the shower at the Motel 6, filled the ice bucket with water because it was a shower, not a bathtub. 
and I just started dumping water on him to try to give him a bath and all this brown came off and I was like, oh my God, you're a white dog. So, uh, <laughs> and in that process of me, and I think he's about ready to, I think he's about ready to, you, you're about ready to take off over there? Or are you just gonna go ahead here? Why don't you just, why don't you just keep sitting with mommy? Come here, sit down. <laughs> he's like, I don't want to. <laughs> He's looking for his escape. No, you're my co-host. You can't escape. All right, go ahead. Go. Go on, go. All right. Enough of freckles. So everybody, that's freckles. Um, and actually, it was kind of funny. There was a bunch of bikers that, that showed up at the, at the motel. And I was like, hey, this guy would look really cute on the back of some of your bikes. And they're like, no. Um, I was like, just put a little leather jacket on him and a little helmet and glasses. He'll be awesome. You know, and then uh, my second name that I had for him was Scout because he loved sitting in the front seat of the, the moving van because Fresno didn't work out. So then we ended up going down to Bakersfield. So from the, the drive from Fresno to Bakersfield, he sat sort of like co-captain and the entire time he was just sitting there, you know, looking out. And then we pulled into a truck stop. And then he, uh, we left the window down a little bit and uh, went inside to use the bathroom. I come out and he's half hanging out of the, out of the mirror, out of the window. So I was like, okay, now I get it. Now I see how you, be, you know, came to live next to the freeway. You jumped out of somebody's car. So yeah, he was a, a car jumper, great escape artist. And, um, but now he's my best friend. He saved my life. I saved his. And there you go. So um, anyway, once again, we are taking Skype calls. I'm waiting for my substitute co-host to show up, um, but he hasn't shown up yet. So I'm gonna take a look at some of these messages. Um, adorable doggy, thank you, Nick. Uh, yes, my BFF, long rider. Oh, didn't get to see that message, but thank you, Eric, for being a moderator. Thank you to the moderators, awesome. Um, anyway, let's see. <laughs> what else do you want to talk about? Okay, let's, I don't, you know, this was my, the guest who was supposed to be here tonight. It was her idea to want to do mean tweets. So since she's not here and I didn't know she wasn't going to be here uh, until like about a half hour ago, um, I didn't really have a chance to plan a different topic. And, you know, and I've been waiting for my substitute co-host. Um Yes, thank you. I don't know what the yes, thank you, yes, thank you was for, um, but okay there. Um, anyway, so <laughs> what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> Is it raining yet? Yes, it's raining. It's been raining. Um, anyway, you know what? This is like, I'm kind of starting to feel like maybe I shouldn't be doing live broadcasts because you know, after last week, I was really kind of stressed and I thought I was going to have a breakdown on camera. Um, and then today, my guest and slash co-host couldn't make it. And now my substitute co-host isn't here. Um, I'm kind of thinking maybe this isn't going to work out. That's what I'm thinking. Um, <laughs> so, all right, then let's 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 go to some mean tweets. All right. So I'm signing out of a Skype right now. So nobody wanted to call in. That's too bad for you. i um, going to go to Twitter. Uh, you're doing, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Um, okay. So <laughs> I, I just went to Twitter and I, the, the first message I see is from someone going, sex toys are the greatest Valentine's gift. Perhaps they are. I don't know. To me, you know, if you love someone, there's you shouldn't have to have a special day assigned by a greeting card company to say that you appreciate and love that person. Um, so, you know, you should love your you should show appreciation and love every day. Um, I have to say, I will say this, though, those of you who are following along on the Twitter <laughs> You notice that I've locked I've locked my personal account, and over the past few days, I've I've received a bunch of follower follower requests, which is highly unusual. But I have a feeling that it's due to a particular subject um, that has to do with a particular person, 
and uh, <laughs> can't wait for it. I'm, I'm seeing Jim's Jim's uh, a response to the tweet. Um, so what I'm going to say is he, keep trying. Something good will eventually happen. Hi, Rodero, Roder Rodero. You you popped up last week. Nick, I've seen those mean tweets. They're not big on common sense. <laughs> no, they aren't. They aren't. Um, now, without saying any names or anything like that, I, I know each week I keep saying, oh, I'm not going to talk about a certain topic. But, you know, sure as shit, that certain topic seems to find a way to pop up for one reason or another. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there was a, a situation, uh, involving someone from the adult industry that was, it's really unfortunate. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, I, I don't know what to say. I, I'm trying to be really kind here, but someone, someone that I used to work with, uh, has a pattern of involving herself in other people's lives. And that same person involved herself in my drama that was taking place last summer with that person that I was in court with. Uh, she didn't know this person yet after she found out that we had dated, she befriended him and then sought him out, drove, drove from where she lives to where he lives, which was like a three hour difference uh, to meet with him and take pictures with him just to post online to make sure I saw them. Uh, they, she also let it be known that she was meeting with his detectives and all this other stuff. And during the court proceedings, um, this person had submitted uh, text messages and emails that I had always wondered, like, how did she get, how did she come across these? But I, at the same time, I also noticed that I was missing eight years of outgoing emails. Um, right around that same time. Now, I wasn't sure exactly which of the two people I had, you know, suspected of hacking into my email and uh, retrieving those eight years of emails. Um, but, you know, I, I believe it was either the person I was in court with or the person that, that I had used to work alongside with. So I figured it was one of those two people. Um, and then recently, over the past couple of days, that same person uh, not the person I was in court with, but this person I used to work alongside with, um, she's popping up again and involving herself yet again in another person's misfortune, you know, bad, I don't know what you call it, unfortunate circumstance. And then I started noticing a pattern. And uh, the, per the, per the person who is, uh, the person whose drama she's involving herself in um, you know, I, I had seen some tweets to this performer and they mirrored a lot of, they were very similar, almost identical in verbatim, you know, in wording to the types of tweets and messages that I was receiving last year when my same former coworker was harassing me. So because of that reason, I decided to come forward and, and just be a little bit more forthcoming in regards to some of what I had experienced with the person who likes to put herself in other people's drama. So my Twitter timeline for the past couple of days has been sort of um, like as I'm finding out information going, oh my gosh, this is exactly what happened with me. This is a pattern. I think this is worth exposing be you know just for various reasons so for those of you who don't like drama i want to apologize for that um but i think in some ways you know as bad as social media can be sometimes it can be cathartic and it gives uh, especially if you don't if you don't have friends that that live close to you um you know oftentimes i, I put something out there and i'm like what do you guys think about this you know because i don't know i don't know how other people think and act and behave, you know, cause I'm only me. I know how I think and act and behave. So sometimes I put stuff out there just so I can get opinion and feedback. Um, and it, and it does help me. It does actually help me as much as Twitter, uh, social media can also be sort of, um, it can lead to, to some certain people can cause anxiety. Uh, but once you, I think once you learn, there goes the hat, once you kind of can learn how to manage and, and block out the, the mean people, I think social media can actually be a beneficial uh, tool.
tool for, for individuals. Uh, let's catch up on the reading here. <clears throat> Nick, I've seen, okay, Darnell, huh? it's it's unavoidable at this point. Yeah, I know. Some, fortunately. Oh, hey, Joe. We got a podcast by Mata. And Eric, social media is a double-edged sword. sword. <laughs> See, if my co-host was here, he would be totally making fun of me right now. He's like, you don't have to say the W, you know, because I say cool whip, uh, miracle whip, sword, and white. <laughs> oh, well, that's how I do things. That's how I say things. Um, <clears throat> still anxiously awaiting his arrival. And um, you know what? I'm going to switch hats one second i'm going to switch a hat here and here we go there we go oh look at that one hey is this way is this the way it's supposed to go or is it supposed to go this way well oh, nope it's supposed to go this way all right so this hat can also be found at georgie's and mommy's and wait let me read the, the description it is made with, it's from, originally from Saks Fifth Avenue, and it's made in Italy, uh, and it is uh, Italian, it's, it's, it's Italian, <laughs> it's authentic, it's genuine, unfortunately, you know, sadly, but, you know, it's, it's genuine. Um, I think the price on this one was, uh, I think, like around $80, 50 or 80 the, the red one that I just wore was also around that same price. Um, okay, yes, it can be a double-edged sword. 15 viewers, this is crazy, okay. Um, so let's see, what else is going on? Oh yeah, so that that's just to explain why my Twitter timeline has been the way that it has been for the past couple of days. Um, and, uh, and, and also I wanted to say when I was originally uh, promoting that the topic tonight was gonna be not so very nice tweets. Uh, some people said, "I wonder if she's gonna she's gonna read out her mean tweets to people." You know what? Show me a mean tweet, and if you if you want to call me on Skype, or if you'd like to post it right here and ask me about it, we can talk about it. You know. But unless you know the the situation firsthand, it's really no room for anyone to comment on. Or if you're if or if you were someone who had witnessed the situation, you know, there's a lot of people that that like to take things out of context, post those messages out of context, and then comment on it without even really showing the entire uh, ex the entire thread of of conversation. And so, for someone to make a comment based on something that's taken out of context, specifically of uh, to you know, for the person posting the out of context message, you know, you got to think of the source. Why are they posting it like that? Um, you know, at least if you're going to post it out of context, post the link so that individuals can have the opportunity to go to the link, see the messages themselves, and they can reach their own conclusion. Instead of seeking certain type of approval, you know, there's been uh, people commenting about my mental stability online and they don't know me and you know in reality who who there's not one single person who hasn't experienced some sort of trauma or some sort of uh, event in their life that could cause them to either react outrageously you know or uh you know be sad or angry or 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 spout out you know spout off at the mouth to an individual, but unless you're involved in that situation and you know everything from behind the scenes, you really can't comment, you know? And I, I admit my online behavior hasn't always been perfect. Whose is? Um, but, you know, those, those, those who are true friends can understand that no one's perfect and it's no room for anyone to judge. So to the deplorables, I'd like you, I'd like to say to you, butt the fuck out. Just butt out, okay? Um, uh, I could go live on Twitter, but I didn't really, I wasn't sure if I wanted to, uh, since I was gonna do this live live YouTube. Um, someone, just, someone just asked me, can you go live on Twitter? Don't know if I can. Um, someone else wrote, I'm debating removing Twitter, but certain people would think I had died because they don't follow me on anything else. Yeah, see, there's that as well. 
uh, you know, <laughs> you know, you got to think about those things. Um, but then again, you can always lock your Twitter account and just leave it open to the people that you currently have. Um, that's kind of what I do right now. Um, and you know, it, it, it does save sanity and that way people want to follow you. You, you just like, you, you get a follow request. You look at them, you go to their profile, check them out. What do they like? Who else are they tweeting with? What, what tweets, do, what tweets do they like? Who do they follow? Who follows them? Do they actually tweet themselves or do they just follow a bunch of people? In my experience and having been part of one time, having been part of the adult industry, I do tend to receive a lot of, I call them collectors, um, being, you know, Twitter followers that just collect porn people. And so those people, I just say no, because you're, you're looking at the wrong person here. <laughs> you're not going to find what you're looking for. If you're just into collecting porn on Twitter, you can look someplace else because you're not going to find it on my account. Um, Let's see. Uh, Jim says, good idea. Um, yeah, it, it, it is, you know, and, and then there's other, another, another form of collector would be the Twitter account that likes to collect followers. You know, they'll happily accept anyone that follows them just so that their numbers can be a certain number. They can go, oh, look, I got 200 million thousand followers. Yay, I'm awesome. I don't care. You know, I like to have uh, the, the people who follow on Twitter. I like that they're authentic, that they engage in, in conversation. Um, they post their opinions. Uh, they share ideas. Um, <laughs> the word of today is collectors. So, all right. The word of today is collectors. If you have an adult beverage and you hear the word collector, Take a sip. Okay. My adult beverage is I'm, I'm kind of, I like wine spritzers. So this is a little bit of ginger ale mixed in with a, with a Zinfandel of some sort. I can't remember. Um, let's see. Nick says that actually happened to me. I was offline for a few weeks and I got a frantic phone call after those weeks. Nick, are you okay? I thought something happened. Ugh, that's terrible. I'm sorry. Um, Thank you. I love the uh, uh, attitude and personality. You know, I don't know. Maybe I should just call it a personality podcast. There's an idea. Okay, I'm going to sign in to the Raw Talk Twitter account because I it looks like I have six six notifications here. And it's basically uh, people saying, yay, can't wait for the show. <laughs> All right. You know what? Since I have a bunch of, um, let's see, Melissa's word of the week. There's your new gimmick for the show. Melissa's word of the week. Okay. Oh, I know. Okay. Hashtag what chaps my hide. I don't know if anyone here uh, used to listen to raw talk when I was on that other station and every once in a while I would do a what chaps my hide. So I want all of you here to submit at least one or two hashtag what chaps my hide. Okay. Um, speaking of collecting, how many hats did you get? I have five or yeah, but two of them are for men and I'm waiting for my male co-host who may or may not show up. Excuse me as I lean out here for a second. Ah, there we go. So, um, oh shoot, I forgot to put the time, time on. So we're at 735. All right. What chaps my hide? My drink is Coke, but I'm going to need another can. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, aren't you the one? You, the, that's the Nick that said, "Hey, you sent a, a Coke can that had the word Melissa on it." And I thought at the time, I thought it was just for me, and I was like, "Oh, thank you, that's so sweet." And then you were like, "No, actually, I posted that like five years ago. <laughs> I just thought I would share it with you because I thought it was neat." I was like, "Oh, all right, cool. Thanks anyway. I guess sure. <laughs> all right, so." Um, thing is time to check uh, the time to switch hats all right here's something that chaps my hide really quick now there's some people that I ch that I have uh, I chat with that on direct message that I don't chat with publicly for various reasons um, recently there was a person in the military who I've been chatting with and this this person I've been chatting with him on and off for the past couple of years and um, 
when I was going through that court situation, oh, well, oh, a message being held for review. Now I could tell you right now, there are three words that I put into my uh, settings as to not being allowed, or actually, I'm sorry, three, three phrases. You are a whore. You are a slut and you are a liar. <laughs> so if that message is being held for review, I'm going to assume it, it contains either the word liar, slut, or whore. <laughs> um, what chaps my hide when some asshole parks his midlife crisis in a handicapped parking spot? You know what? Oh, oh you, did you, you delete that? Um, what chaps my, hat, my hide? Political fanboys. Um, view deleted message. Okay. Well, all right. Moderator, you know, we, I think we could, yeah, that's all right. So, um, uh, that person is actually a friend. So I will accept that message. You can put the message back if you like. So, uh, my moderator doesn't know who my friends are yet. So this is our learning experience for everybody. And I want to thank, I want to say thank you once again to the moderator for volunteering to moderate. <laughs> and I do want to say, um, if anyone, let's see, we're, so if anyone hasn't seen Hey Internet Eric here, if you haven't seen his YouTube page, I think you should. I really, really think you should. You might find something on there that's really funny. You might find something on there that you connect with, especially people that are into horror movies. Like Nick, I believe you're you're a big horror fan, right? Um, I'm, I'm assuming. So, uh, hey, Internet Her Eric here. He he likes to review like I think uh, Pet Cemetery type stuff, Bride of Chucky type thing, right? <laughs> stuff like that. Anyway, so a couple of days ago, he went off topic and he, he reviewed, he reviewed a different movie that, that a couple of friends, some asshole friends of his <laughs> asked him to review. And sometimes you just got to say, fuck my life. <laughs> so uh, yeah, political fanboys. Now, what do you mean political fanboys? Are you saying like, if, um, you know, I, I call it, see, that was my bad with the deleted message. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So that was a mistake. If you can, you can put it back or I don't know, I'll put it back later. But um, yeah, what chaps my hide is when, when people park in the handicap spot. I agree. Um, what chaps my hide are, let's see. Well, I'm just going to say, what chaps my hide are people that take the truth and, and then the very next day, they take that truth and spin it around to be completely some, something completely different than what really happened. Um, Darnell, uh, by the way, you're my Valentine, Melissa. Oh, thanks, Darnell. Thank you. Um, that's very sweet. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't know what to say about that. I'm, you know, I don't really have a Valentine. Maybe I'm, I don't want to say I'm everybody's Valentine because that kind of makes me sound like a like a slut. <laughs> All right. So it's time to switch hats. Now this one, this one looks like, wait a second. It looks a little bit like, uh, well, it's a little too late for that, Darnell. <laughs> You're like, oh, I hope that doesn't make you blush. Well, thank you, but it's a little too late for that. Luckily, I have this bright light right here. And uh, no, it doesn't make me blush. It makes me feel a little bit mm, uncomfortable. It does. I'll be honest, a little bit uncomfortable because I don't know you. Um, and you can't really make me your Valentine because you don't know me. You just know me. You just know me from Twitter and from these couple of videos that you probably watched. So uh, Eric says, what chaps my hide? When friends, from friends request movies for review that they know is garbage and all hate. Yeah. That really sucks. And I agree with you, Eric. That really freaking sucks. Um, and, you know, whoever those friends are, I would say probably you should get rid of them. So on that note, cheers. <laughs> Maybe we should add a second, a second word to the word of the day. What chaps my hide? It's time to drink. Drink Coca-Cola. 
Now I'm by and oh, here we go. My my substitute co-host is, is now here. Yay! Oh, I thought you. Oh, <laughs> this person is saying what? I thought you were gonna be my substitute co-host. Apparently not. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have. Uh, let's see. Jim says when people drive slow in the fast lane, not good, but it does. But it does my. It does chap your height. You know what? It chaps my height too, especially when I'm in a hurry, and 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 they can and when that person is in the middle of the freeway or the interstate or whatever it is that you call it from your part of the country, wherever you might all be located the parkway, um, and they can clearly see that people are driving around them, you know, going this way and going that way, yet they're still going 50 miles per hour, maybe even 20, who knows? So Freckles was my co-host for a minute. I'm just feeling my, my the ghost who just walked in. <laughs> so come sit, yeah, 15 minutes. All right, never mind. They're, they're, they're not going to sit here. Okay. Um, so let's see. I see them all the time on Twitter. Basically, their tweets are all political, complaining about everything. I sometimes wonder what kind, what kind of life, wait, what kind life that is. No happiness unless they enjoy being angry. Okay, let me read this again. I see them all the time on Twitter. Basically, their tweets are all political, complaining about everything. I sometimes wonder what kind of what kind life that is. No happiness unless they enjoy being angry. That's what I call the the deplorables. Now I don't mean like every deplorable, but there's a group of people that that they're deplorable this, deplorable that, blah, 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 blah. And they sit and they chat to themselves, right? And and all they talk about is angry shit. They rip on people, they they ridicule, they make judgments on, on someone's mental health. Um, and if if for some reason you you speak out about a certain celebrity or former celebrity, like automatically you're on their radar and they hate on you. And those are the people that that have been um, you know, they write about myself and they write about the woman that was supposed to co-host with me tonight um, because for, and I don't even know why they don't even know. <clears throat> they don't even know the person that we're talking about yet for some reason, because that person was one time a celebrity in their life, then that person can do no wrong. Right. And then there's women. Uh, let's see. There's women that, that talk shit about other women. And, you know, even if you don't like this particular person, there's some things, you know, that, no offense to men, but, you know, women, women need to support one another, you know, because the, you know, guys, I don't, you know, I can't comment on what it's like being a guy because I'm not one, I'm, but I'm a female. And it's like, when there's certain things that happen in a female's life, you would like to think that, that there would be other women there to support you, even if they don't like you, at least keep their mouth shut and not talk bad about you. Right. So, um, so, so today when, when we were advertising that we were going to be talking about not so nice tweets and someone said, oh, I wonder if Melissa is going to talk about, you know, what she said about this particular person. It's like, you know, I've been dealing with that particular person talking, trash talking me, harassing me uh, for over, for over a year. This person has, has for some one reason or another seems to have interfered and in, she interfered with my radio show, which is why we're here. Um, she interfered with a play that I was supposed to be in. It was like five years ago. I was supposed to be in this play. It was called the Se uh, deep throat sex scandal. And it was a play based off of uh, what was happening in the lives of the actors and actresses who made the original deep throat back in the, 70s or 80s. I don't even know what year that movie was made. But, you know, uh, Linda Lovelace and uh, Harry Reams, right? So this play was based on what was happening at that time that the movie was made, that the original film was made. And there there was a, a part in the play that was, it was like a, a ticket taker that, you know, a, a, a woman who stands outside. Oh, you can hear the horn honking. A woman standing outside just taking tickets to go into the movie theater to watch deep throat. Um, 
Now, the, the character, the role of the ticket taker was being portrayed by a different personality from the adult industry each week. So in each week, it was a four day run. It went from Thursday to Sunday each week. And it was just a one scene thing, one page. It was like one or two pages, nothing major. Right. So um, at the time, Bill Margold was still alive. And and he had uh, submitted my name to the, the producer and the director of this play saying, you know, you should have Melissa Hill in it, blah, 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 blah. So um, I grabbed a couple of friends. Uh, he gave me four tickets. We went and saw the play. And before I went before the play actually came on, he asked me if I would sit in and um, do a reading. And I was like, well, I haven't even seen the script yet. And uh <clears throat> <laughs> the the person who I was sitting in and watching happened to be Miss Evans. Now, this was the first time I ever met her, as far as I remember. Apparently, she said that we met once before, like in 1997. So I was on my way out of the industry. She was on her way in. And apparently, we met standing outside of a location one time. And I do remember having that. Once she reminded me, I remember having that conversation with this individual at the time, but I still have no, I still can't wrap my head around the, the fact that she's the woman that I was talking to in 1997 because, you know, she looked different. But anyway, so, so apparently we would met once in 1997, but as far as I was concerned, we were meeting for the first time in uh, 2013 or, or 2014. And um, something happened. Uh, so I got, I was assigned I was scheduled to appear on this particular weekend and uh, I was, I had my makeup ready, you know, on and my hair was in curlers and I was in the car driving to the theater. I get a phone call from the director or the producer and he says something like, um, Hey, I just called to see what your schedule is when, what's your availability? And I said, what do you mean? What's my availability? And he says, well, for the play. And I said, um, well, as far as I was concerned, as far as I knew, I'm going now. I said, I'm actually in the car on my way there. And then he says, oh, oh, no. Oh, shoot. Oh, man. Nobody called you? I said, called me about what? And he says, well, when I found out you couldn't make it, and I'm thinking, why would you think I couldn't make it? I was there last week for the dress rehearsal. There's photos of me being there. It happened to be the uh, memorial service, like they were having like a impromptu memorial service for Harry Reams because the 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 actual person Harry Reams had really passed away in real life. And so at the theater they were having uh, like a memorial service, a tribute thing. And um, okay, I can hear that. Anyway, and so uh, my my ghost is washing dishes. Um, so uh, so there's pictures of me being there, and I and I tried on the dress that I was going to wear. I walked across the stage wearing the boots that I was going to be wearing. And so for him to call me the next week and say, "Oh, well, when I heard that you weren't going to be available, I went ahead and I booked somebody else." You want to want to take a guess who that person was? Miss Evans. Now Miss Evans had already had her one cameo appearance appearance. So now she was going to be appearing a second time. No other person who had that cameo role in the entire duration of that production appeared twice except for her. And she appeared on the week that was supposed to be my week. And I was like, Oh, that's really strange. I always thought it was him. I thought, you know, you know, whatever reason he decided he didn't like me, you know, and he made up some crazy stories about why he, uh, he didn't tell me these crazy stories. He told other people and, you know, he said something like, I didn't get along with the director. I didn't show up for rehearsal. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? There's pictures of me there. Hello. Anyway. So, um, you know, so that was that, but then now looking back, at all the strange things that have occurred in my life, you know, where things went wrong, things went sideways. There is always one individual at the other end of that. And it's the same person. So that's just to give you guys a little bit of back, back history there. Um, so Eric says, I've heard many podcast interviews with Mar Mar Mr. Margold seemed like a really cool man down to earth. Um, 
just like clockwork. You could set your watch to her. Yes, you could, can't you? Anyway, so could you come and sit here just for five minutes, please? Oh, okay. All right, then. So it's time to switch hats. Now we've got a fedora. What is it? Pork pie. What? Pork pie. Pork pie? Pork pie hat. A pork pie hat. What is a pork pie hat? A mini fedora. A mini fedora. Okay. So this pork pie hat, uh, a.k.a. mini fedora, is available at Georgie's and Mommy, Mommy's Finds. Once again, like I said, if you go to the Melissa Hill Raw Talk Facebook page or even my profile or even Twitter, you know, uh, the link is there. You can find it. Actually, you can find it on the Facebook post that I posted to promote tonight's show. Um, okay, so how long have we been on? Oh, we've been on for 49 minutes. Um, so I was actually pretty proud of myself that I made it kind of on time tonight. <laughs> right, kind of on time tonight. Uh, so getting, getting better. I think next week I, I'm considering, uh, taking a look at, um, blog talk radio. So if there's anyone, if, if, if any of you know anyone would like to help sponsor that, it's uh, a lot cheaper than the station that I was on blog talk radio. Uh, you, I could have a free service, but the thing that I, that from what I read so far, the thing that I do like about them is that they uh, allow you to have pre-recorded um, sections that you can add into the show. So like with my music, my intro music and all that kind of stuff, that way I don't have to have my phone sitting here playing the music and sounding kind of janky. You know, it might, it'll hopefully sound a lot better. And then you get a whole, um, like a switchboard type thing where I can control stuff and, be more like it was when I was at that station. And um, the subscription is like $34 a month. Um, Nick says, oh wait, no, Darnell, Detective Hill. Oh, do I look right? You know, I played a detect, you know, that's a good. Did any of you ever see the Stardust, uh, Stardust series from Vivid? <laughs> <laughs> there, I think it was, I think it was called Stardust and it was a, a genteel series. And um, I think it was about aliens, right? I, I think there was like 10 or 12 uh, movies in the series. And towards the end, I played, I played not a, I think I played a PI. And <laughs> they made me smoke a cigar. They, no joke. They made me smoke a cigar. And, and it was, oh, they, and, and I had a hat and it said scoop on it. <laughs> <laughs> and there I was at the typewriter and I was talking, I think I was uh, writing articles about the aliens and all this other kind of stuff. Um, I think I missed that series. Sam Spade, love it. <laughs> uh, oh, it's a new, it's a new, a new person. Void, oid generation, void, oid, void, oid generation. Well, welcome to Melissa Hill Raw Talk. Um, Dill Pickle. Why, are you going to hand... If you're gonna hand it to me. Put the bag on, in in the in frame so that people can at least see what I'm dealing with over here. Thank you. So, what is this? This is Kettle brand crinkle cut potato chips, dill pickle. Great taste, naturally. It tastes like pickle. I don't know my potato chip tasting like pickles. <laughs> All right. Um, and see, sorry about the difficult, difficult to pronounce username. Voidoid generation. Welcome. I hope I hope your friend and not foe. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you are friend. You are friend. Welcome, friend, to Melissa Hill Raw Talk. This is my second YouTube live broadcast and those of you who have shows or have you know things that you do on youtube i'll be i'll be i'll gladly accept um suggestions tips advice ideas now i know some of you don't broadcast live so i think it's a little bit different but um i am liking the youtube live versus the facebook live uh, just because uh, the chat is over on one side, the you know, I just need to figure out how to make the printing bigger. So I'm not always going like, what? What does it say? <laughs> and 
on, um, I do have, oops, I do, oh, more light, sorry. I do have the um, GoPro. I have to say, I have to say it slowly or else because it's on voice command. So if I go, if I have GoPro recording, it's going to probably stop and start recording again. So um, I have the GoPro over here one day. Um, I think I keep saying, I think I'm going to create a Patreon account. And then, and then um, when that happens, then I'll add this onto the Patreon and you'll be able to see the behind the scenes of what it takes to set the shit up. Um, I'm going to, you know, cause last week I, I included the setup so that you guys could see what I was dealing with. And, um, it didn't seem to get as many views at first. So then I thought, mm, maybe they're not really interested in watching the setup. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like watching the setup or do you not like watching the setup? Um, Eric, let's see. Oh no. You just woke up feeling like crap. I'm sure it's, it's cold over where you're at. Right. Um, and um, I think that's, oh, well, I don't want to say your real name. Um, NJ Dirt 13. And then Eric says, kettle pickle flavored chips now sponsored by Raw Talk. <laughs> you know what? It's funny. After we announced that the word of the day was going to be collector, it seemed to never come up again. But collector. <laughs> All right. So we're approaching the end of the hour. I'm starting to feel like I think I think. This could possibly be the setup until I find a studio. It is a little echoey for me right now. And, and um, the traffic has finally died down. So I might, I don't know, I might decide to start the broadcast at 730. Because when I started at 7, I was still hearing traffic go. At least you're not hearing airplanes. That's that's good. Um, and then uh, Voidoid Generation says, maybe faux, but certainly not faux. <laughs> Thank you. That's good to know. Um, and yes, uh, oops, sorry. That was me picking chip out of my teeth. Uh, NJ Dirt 13 says, yes, it's cold and was windy all day. I'm sorry. You know, I'm, it's, uh, I forget what part of the country you're in, but that's kind of weird that it seems to be like windy everywhere. I think, um, you know, one day, I don't know if any of you listened to the broadcast uh, when I was at the station and I had um, the environmental scientist come on, but I think maybe it's time to have another environmental scientist show. Um, but here's another strange thing that women deal with. Now, be being that she's a scientist and and even though she deals with the environment, you know, she's, she receives a lot of um, stalk stalkers, threats, Strange things like that, you know, and it's like she's talking about the environment. What's to be angry about that? You know, it's not like I have another friend who's also a scientist, but she studies the brain and how in relation to sex, sex, sex stuff. Right now, a lot of people don't like that kind of stuff. And so she gets she gets a lot of harassment and stalkers because of that. I don't know if I understand it, but I'm but there's a distinct there's a difference between being an environmental scientist and a neuroscientist who studies the brain in relation to your sexual organs. Some, you know, people would just rather not talk about sex, sexual organs, or anything like that. They just want it to all go away. So she she gets a lot of stalkers as well. Um, okay, one more hat. I, I have one more hat. Oh, here it is. Oh, someone gave me this too. And they said, here, put your camera phone on it and do stuff with it. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do with it? If any of you out there have any ideas on what I could do with this little thing, let me know because it would be fun to use it. Um, but keep in mind, I'm only one person and I only have two hands. So changing hats. Is this a fedora? Is this a, what's it called again? Pork pie. Pork pie. Now, what's the, what's the difference? Okay, so it's a small fedora. All right, so this pork pie, also available, Georgie's and Mommy's finds. Uh, once again, like I said, you can find the link to Georgie's and Mommy's finds on the Melissa Hill Raw Talk Facebook page. And, oh, oh, and most important, go to, go to, Georgie's and mommy's finds and, and remember click because there's like three of them because she had other attempts at creating other pages that didn't work out. So I know it's a little confusing. The best way to know that you're on the correct one is to either go to the Melissa Hill profile or the raw talk Facebook page and you will find the links to the correct Georgie's and mommy's finds. Um, click on it, like it 
and then you'll automatically be entered into a drawing uh, for, to in, to win a two hundred dollars shopping spree at Georgie's and Mommy's Finds. Now it, you don't have to be local. She will ship. Eric can can attest to that because he he purchased a a um, a little knife thing. I don't know an envelope opener, mail opener thing. Or, no, 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 wait, what is it? Was it a knife or a bottle? Oh, bottle opener, right? It was a bottle opener. Um, a little bottle opener thing that I think it was made out of, yeah, okay, bottle opener. And I think it's uh, carved out of, well, it's carved out of something, you know. Anyway, it was hand carved. And, um, and we shipped it to him, and he still talks about how happy he is with his bottle opener. So, um there we go. We are just at one hour and I want to say thank you to all of you guys, to all the people, individuals here who, who participated, who chimed in. Um, I see two people gave me the thumbs up. Um, I hate being one of those people on YouTube that goes like, and subscribe, <laughs> but you know, you know, you already know what to do. If you want to like, and subscribe, like, and subscribe. If you don't, you don't, that's fine too. Um, and I want to also used it last night. It works great. Oh, he used the bottle opener last night and it works great. So any of you who live in the middle of the country or I'm sorry, anywhere near Kentucky and you're going to, you know, you're into horse racing. This is the hat. This is the hat for your lady. You can wear your pop pork pie fedora <laughs> and your lady can wear oh, long way. And your lady can wear the big fancy hat. What do you think? I feel like a combination between, well, obviously I'm not, I don't look like Mae West, but I think this was something that, this reminds me of something that Anna Nicole Smith would wear. I almost feel like I've seen, oh, well, I feel like I, I've seen it somewhere. But um, so thank you again, everybody for tuning in and, and supporting the Raw Talk show and, uh, you know, send suggestions, ideas, uh, anything that you might want you know a topic that you think i should talk about um because i'll be honest the past few weeks i've been more concerned about making sure i set everything up correctly than i have been about what i'm going to talk about um and but now i've i realize i got to have a backup plan just in case things don't work out just like it did uh oh i got a new subscriber thank you new subscriber um forgot to say you have a great smile oh well, thank you Thank you. Thank you. My parents, I, I started wearing braces from the time I was eight years old. I actually was one of those kids that had a full on headgear. It was, it was beautiful. I had the thing that went around my neck. I had the thing that went over my head. I had the wire bars that were attached to the inside of my mouth and I couldn't take them out even if I went swimming, but that's a topic for another day. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I know it was you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so thank you to my new subscriber and, um, I, I guess maybe I'm not going to be doing Skype calls, but that's okay. I'm going to turn off the lights now and we're going to play the outro. Good night. Hey there, LA. You're listening to Melissa Hill. Okay.